Let's uh, welcome back to the third and final, hopefully, tutorial on how to do the detailed drawings of the coupling link. Uh, let's quick review. We've got our views in, our uh, sectional lines are in, our center lines are in. So the last thing to do really is to put in all the required dimensions. So let's start off by doing the coupling link and we'll determine that we need some diameters and some radius. Uh, and we'll need the distance between centers and perhaps the thickness of the coupling itself. So generally speaking, if you're going to put a diameter dimension in, it's always best to put that looking down on top of a circular object. So I'm going to go into D for dimension and click on this outside uh, circle. And you can see there that fusion defaults to a radius because it's not a complete circle. If we do the one below it, not interested inside it and I'm going to drag that so that the number is outside the view and we can see that it's defaulted to a diameter symbol because that is a complete circle or hole there. Now generally speaking we would bring these dimensions always outside of the view. If I was to click inside the view and leave that in there like so it can start to get a bit confusing as to um, what's actually a dimension line and what's a lead line and so on. So I'm just going to undo that, get rid of that, there it is. So I've got my 32 diameter here, my radius of 30 for that outside there. We need to have, uh, back to D, we need to have this radius of 75 up here. And we probably need to have on either the top view or the front view the dimension between the centers. So to do that, um, I might actually use this. So I can do it with the front view actually. I see if I can use these centers here. So I'm going to click onto the end of the center line once and twice and then drag it down. Now, the reason I clicked onto the end of the center line, um, I'll just position that there, was because you can see here that we've got a gap between the center line and this line which we refer to as the leader line. If there's no gap between the lead line and a feature or a center line, if these two were joined together, it would get quite confusing as to where this line is actually pointing to. So I'll try to demonstrate that over here. If I was to dimension this distance from center to center here, I'll click this center and this center. And as I drag them out, let's drag it to here. You can see that the leader line is actually that full length going from the dimension line there right through. And what it's done, it's actually overridden that axis line. If you can see the difference there between the long dash, short dash. Um, so you always need to select points that you're going to dimension that are going to allow that gap to occur between the feature and your leader line. So that's a little bit of mucking around sometimes, but something that is required for correct dimensioning. Ooh, it's not undoing for some reason. Oh, there we go. All right, um, the last dimension that we probably need to put in on here would be the thickness of the object. So I'm going to just zoom in on here, click on that edge and drag it out and drag it out about 10 millimeters. OK, so that's enough dimensions. Now, um, when you read a drawing, if you see it's only dimensioned on one end and there's no dimensions on the other end, then you assume that this end is exactly the same as that end. Um, OK, so I think the coupling link for dimensioning is completed. I might come over here now and turn my attention to the pin. So we'll do the similar thing with dimensions or diameters, I should say, on this top view. So I'm going to do the outside diameter of 40 here. Uh, this dimension from the outside, visible dimension from these two edges, which is that 32. I'm going to do that next. But then there's a dimension that's difficult to see uh, is this edge from here to here. Now I've just noticed that we should be seeing hidden detail lines on this view here. So I'm going to jump out of 
the dimension tool and I'm going to double click onto that view and I'm going to select visible and hidden edges and you'll see what I mean. So we've got the hidden detail line here which represents this uh, edge of the cylinder part that's the part the retaining clip goes on to. Now it's a good practice not to dimension to a hidden detail line. Uh, it's best to put that somewhere else in the drawing. So I will avoid dimensioning to a hidden detail like that with that 25. I'm going to come down to my drawing here and I'm going to select this top edge of the uh, diameter 25. Click once there, click once there, and then drag it up and place my dimension. Oh, it moved on me there. I'll just see if I can move that back up again. That's better. Now, there's a little problem, though, um, in that the 25 doesn't have the diameter symbol in front of it, and this is a, a diametric dimension. So we'll need to put in um, a diameter symbol there, which, uh, if memory set correctly, it was in text. So I'm just click on text. Somewhere, somewhere on the screen here, I'll click again, make a little box. And you can see here, it gives you a font, your height, and everything, and then it also gives you a list of symbols that you can choose. And the first symbol just happens to be a diameter symbol. So we'll close that and then we'll select that text and we'll drag it over and put it in front of the 25 like so. Okay, so we look back and we go, yes, we have the widest dimension of 40, the 32, and now also the 25. The last thing to do would then be to put some uh, linear dimensions to rec uh, represent this length here. Um, so if we go back to our solution and let's have a quick look, uh, we can see here I've got a, a dimension for this uh, extrusion, the main body part, and then I've got a number of dimensions to show each length of its extrusion like so, and a note to tell me it's a sham from the end there. So let's go back to Fusion. Let's go over to Dimension by pushing the D button. And at this point, I click and hold that edge and drag it out. 42. Now this one's a little bit trickier. If I want to do the distance for, of just that edge, that's fine. So I could do the 6 and drag it to there. But if I wanted to do the distance uh, from this point here to that point there, I'll show you over this side. Click once there, click once there. See how we've got a problem with that leader line is actually, um, there's no gap. Well, there's no gap there actually, which is a problem as well. So we actually need to have, um, when we do this dimension, we need to choose this point, not this point here. So I'm just gonna go back and undo that and show you what I mean again. Back to dimension. I'm gonna choose this point now, one. This is my second point, two. And then if I move my mouse around, you'll see it gives me a number of different orientations for uh, placing that dimension. So I've now got the correct orientation, and then I snap it to that point there. And now you can see there's a gap between the outline of the view and the leader line, which is correct. All right, so with that in mind, let's come up here. I'm going to select this outside point, one there, to this one, move my cursor around till it gets the correct orientation. There it is there, ooh, I'm gonna get that to work. Maybe a little bit incremental, if I hold the shift, I don't know if it'll work, no. Okay, oh, there we go. And bring it about 10 mil out, one there. Uh, this one I should be able to do like so, yes I can. Ah, that's interesting, it's giving me five, so I'll have to change that. So I'll just escape out of that. Dimension again, this point here to that end point there. And once again, bring that around until it gets the correct orientation. So I've got six and six. And I need one more six, which is the distance between these two points here. One, two, 
can bring that out so it's parallel with that one and six. Let's have a look at that. Six, six, and there, six, 42, six, and just, just put this note here that's a one mil chamfer on the end. So using your uh, note with the leader, come down here and select where you want the leader to go to, drag it away, and then let's type in the correct terminology. It's always in capitals, C-H-A-M-F-E-R, one, and then click on close. Okay, and we've got our pin now fully dimensioned. Okay, the last one to do is this retaining clip. Let's have a, look, a quick look at the solution. Uh, it's a little bit difficult because we can't quite get it to do um, the distance between this point here and here was 16, like how we drew it from the original drawing. So we're going to have to put in a slightly inaccurate way of dimensioning. Uh, so this radius, this radius, that radius there, the radius of 10, the distance between them, I suppose we could try to maybe put that 100 millimeters in, uh, and then the six thickness here, and that distance between those two points. All right, so let's try that. So D for dimension again, there's radius number one, radius number two, radius number three. Oh, no, that didn't work. Get out of that, D again. And I'm going to drag that outside the drawing. It might go above or below it. It might go below it like so. Uh, they need this dimension as well, radius of 10. So I'd like to pull it back through there so you can see it going through that center. Uh, I need the distance from that point to that point there. So from that one to that one, I'm going to drag it out. We need the thickness and I think that was it oh and also the distance between centers one two and drag that down there like so now I'm not totally happy with the way that we can do that in fusion but that's the best we've got at this point in time let's think that's a hundred mils apart that diameter that diameter that diameter that radius of 10 and we know the distance is 29.91 we could do that now and we know that that point there has to sit on that edge there from when we drew this okay the last thing to do is just to put some uh, labels in of what these parts are and how many of them that are so to do that let's use the text tool let's come below the bot uh, below the front view click and drag uh, in capitals, this is the coupling, and there's uh, in brackets then there is two of, or you could have two required, and then click close. And then we'll come to the pins, pins, brackets, there are two, oops, two of as well. And close. Oh, that was a bit ordinary. Let me try that again. We'll make that a bit longer. There we go. And then lastly, the retaining clip. The text tool. Make that a bit longer. Retaining clip. Bracket. And there was one. Oops. One of. Close bracket. Close. Okay, now we could muck around a little bit with distances between views and so on. I might just pull this, oops, this view up a little bit close to the other one. And I'm going to grab this text and just sort of centralize it and make it closer to that object. Um, it'd be good if we had a way of drawing lines on the this drawing sheet, but Fusion doesn't allow us to do that. And pull this text down a little bit which might also let me pull that view and perhaps this view down a fraction. And I'm just going to centralize this text here. 
Okay, that's looking pretty good. I better save that before we lose it. And oh, gee, I hadn't saved that from the beginning. Okay, coupling link. Uh, let's call this detail drawing. It's all in capitals. Okay, now make sure it's saved in the correct folder, of course. Click on save. And we're just about done, I think. Um, yes, that looks pretty good to me. Let's check my solution. Yep. Oh, did I put that six in? I think I did. I did. Okay, so um, save your work. Uh, publish that as a PDF. So, whoop, diffusion again. Output it there as a PDF file. Click OK. And then put that into your... Uh, um, PowerPoint presentation. Okay.